Today we're making jalapeno cheese bread. To your bowl, you're gonna wanna add one cup plus one tablespoon of warm water. Then you're gonna go ahead and add two tablespoons of butter. Woo! <laughs> And you just mix that in a little bit. It may not totally melt, but that will happen when you add your flour. Then next, you're gonna add two tablespoons of sugar, one tablespoon of yeast, and one and a half teaspoons of salt. Gonna mix that in. Let your yeast start to dissolve. You can use any bread recipe that you would like, as long as it's a soft bread. You wouldn't wanna use a dry bread like French bread. Now I'm gonna incorporate three cups into my liquid. And I'm gonna add two cups first, and then I will add my third cup as, it, as we mix it. I like to get the, that first two cups mixed all the way in, and then I'll start just adding a little bit of a time, at a time of the rest of the cup. As your dough starts coming together, you'll need to use your hands. And you could use your KitchenAid mixer or a mixer like that. My KitchenAid is broken, so I have to do it by hand. Now I've used about two and a half cups of flour so far. I'm just gonna pull the bread together and then kind of knead it a little bit to work the rest of the flour in. This video is part of a collab with a nice group of ladies for Dovember. It's all about dough in November to make it Dovember. We have lots of good videos up. You can check the playlist that's linked down below in the description of this video. You see the dough is still sticky. It's still sticking to my hands. That net lets me know I need to continue to add my more flour in. Depending on your climate, you may need to add a little more flour or a little less flour. Get both hands in now. And I'm just rolling it, turning it, rolling it back over, and kneading it in. I don't typically do a long knead on my bread. I just knead it enough to get the flour mixed in. And usually that's plenty. If you are using a stand mixer, please be very careful not to over knead your dough. You can over knead it real quickly in a stand mixer and it will make for a tough bread. A lot of people like to knead on the counter and that's perfectly fine if that's the way you want to knead it. I prefer kneading it in a bowl because it keeps all my mess in the bowl. It actually doesn't make a mess. Okay, that's all the kneading I'm going to do to my dough. You can see it's a little bit sticky, but it, I can touch it. And it's got a nice spring to it still. So I'm going to put this in my bowl to rise. I'm going to cover it and let it rise for about one hour or until it's doubled in size. Don't tell my neighbors, but I'm gonna bless them with this bread we're making today. If somebody were gonna bless you with bread, what kind of bread would you like? Before we start working with our dough, we wanna go ahead and dip out our jalapeno peppers and let them be draining. You don't want this to be real moist. Just depends on how much you're making, how much you'll need to drain. This will probably be too much, but I can always add it back to my jar. One hour later. Our bread has doubled in size. It's been about exactly an hour. Now you may need to put a little flour. It's want to stick to me just a little bit. So I'm just gonna sprinkle a little flour around the bowl to get it out. I'm gonna put a little bit of flour on my board. I'm gonna pat it down. I'm eyeballing this. And I'm gonna cut it into three pieces. When I bake this bread for the farmer's market, I use my scale where everything will be exact. And this is not exact, but this is what I'm gonna work with. I'm gonna work with these three pieces. I'm gonna start off with this one, and I'm just gonna pat this out. Okay, you're not trying to get this super thin, but about but that's about perfect, just like that. And then you're gonna take your peppers, and it, it, depending on your taste, how many peppers you wanna put, you wanna put that on there evenly. And then you're gonna take mild cheddar cheese, about a fourth of a cup, or 
as much as you like, actually. Once you get your cheese on there, you're gonna wanna kinda pat it down where it'll kinda stick into the dough because we're gonna roll this up. And you start rolling it just like this. And as you roll, you're gonna pinch the ends to try and keep it in there. Now you could bake this just like this, let it double in size and bake it just like that. But I'm gonna show you some little kind of like rolls. So you're kind of doing this just like a cinnamon roll. The end always gets shy, it doesn't have quite as much stuff in it. And you're gonna let these rise till they're doubled. With our next piece of dough, we're gonna do the same thing except we're gonna cut it different. This will make a great presentation on your Thanksgiving table. And go ahead and put your cheese the same exact way. Pat it down and roll it up. Now, once you get it into a log, you're going to cut that in half. I like using my dough blade. You can use a knife if you want. Now you can roll this over. Okay, we're gonna lay this on our tray to rise. All right, now for our last. More flour on my board. This one is a bit bigger. You could do this with the whole loaf if you wanted to make a really large loaf of bread to have sitting on your table. But a half a pound of your dough would probably make a, a, a still a nice size loaf. Okay, we're gonna go back with the jalapenos again. This, this loaf that I'm making with the jalapenos will make the prettiest presentation for your table. I'm using a little bit more cheese because I have a bigger piece of dough. And we're just gonna roll it up again. Remember to pinch your end as you roll. You make sure you seal your seam and before I cut, I didn't actually tell y'all this a while ago, before I cut it, I always like to turn my seam side down, like this. Now, you see what, this is quite a bit bigger than the other one. Now we have the exact same thing as we did before, but we're not gonna leave it like this. We're going to pinch these ends together, really good. Then we're gonna twist it over. We're gonna lift it and twist it and then pinch this end again right here. Then very carefully, we're gonna pick it up and we're gonna set it on our tray. All right, we're done now until we let it double and then we're gonna bake it. I've made a little boo-boo. <laughs> Well, the boo-boo's not that big of a deal. I can fix it, but I really shouldn't have put this big loaf with these smaller loaves. These are only, the rolls are only gonna take about 10 minutes to cook. These will only take 10 to 15 minutes to cook, and this is gonna take 20 minutes to cook. So, I'm gonna have to be in and out of the oven with my pan to take the, the rolls off where they won't burn while this finishes cooking. But, that being said, it's time to get them in the oven. All right, we're gonna put these into my 350 degree oven that's already preheated. And our first timer is gonna be for 10 minutes. Make sure you stick around to the end to see the finishing touches on the bread. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and remove both of these off. I ended up cooking them all 15 minutes now. I forgot to turn my convection on on my oven, so it took a little bit longer. So I'm gonna put my big loaf back in for another five minutes and I'll check it. Didn't that turn out beautiful? Well, here is my last thing to do is to 
brush them with butter. It's one of the secrets to my cinnamon roll recipe. Watch that next. It's linked in the description below.